楽しみです,しみですじゃあそれではいよいよ岡田さんと金子さんにご登場いただきましょうどうぞ<笑>出てきやがるね<笑>あやった<笑>もう出たもうねよかったもうどこのうさんくさい親父ですかカズマカニコ was one of the greatest minds in game making. No, カズマカニコ was one of the greatest creative minds in game making. This is because カズマカニコ is gone. No, I don't mean he's dead. I just mean he's moved on from the creative standpoint. In the same way, we should be completely fair with the amount of work other members of the Atlas team contributed. In the 90s, the way the team worked was very collaborative. What I mean is, everyone contributed to the story and game design to some degree. This carried over to the general game design philosophy Atlas Japan holds today, where anyone could contribute ideas and they will be openly considered. But within that, Kaneko contributed many things outside of the demon designs and would go on to shape the worlds of Devil Summoner 1, Shin Megami Tensei 2, Nocturne, Digital Devil Saga, and Strange Journey. Just to name a few. Again, with collaboration and not being the sole contributor. In the late 90s and early 2000s, he became an idol of sorts. Within the context of Japanese pop culture, he was somewhat popular. This garnered friendships with people like Hirohito Araki, Hideo Kojima, Tomomi Kobayashi, and other bigwigs in the cross of cultural staples of manga, gaming, and anime. He was big enough to even have a series of art shows. To have beers regularly with Hideo Kojima and to be commissioned to work outside of Atlas for games and for promotions for books and otherwise. All of that to say that he's not some obscure video game artist no one cared about. He was at the forefront of what made Shin Megami Tensei Shin Megami Tensei for a while. And suddenly, around 2009, he kind of just stopped being the face. He had come off of Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. And from there, it became a bizarre journey. He contributed to Devil Survivor, and his scenario draft was used primarily as the foundation for Shin Megami Tensei 4. That isn't to say he wasn't involved in the development for Shin Megami Tensei 4. He did supervise revisions to the story and the game and the way the world looked, but he didn't create any new art. He showed up in the credits for Persona 5 as well, as he and Megumi Shiraishi supervised the 3D models of demons, probably because. They were the ones that drew them originally. Most of the time, you'll just see him credited as the demon artist, essentially. Outside of a novel interview to promote a friend's game or an art piece here or there, he's kind of just gone. Now, there's been a lot of speculation as to why his presence diminished to the point where it kind of just fizzled away. People who saw the Atlas exhibition for the 25th anniversary of Shin Megami Tensei. Where they noted the gallery of art didn't feature names of the art, nor did it credit k a z m a k a n i k o when applicable. This was interesting because a Japanese fan going by Yamaneko or Umi Horse now caused a stir when he stated quite a few controversial things. In his experience, fans asked Atlas staff at the exhibition why k a n i k o wasn't credited and where did he go. Being told that they couldn't talk about it or they'd be fired, he alleged the lack of. He alleged the lack of titling was intentional and added other startling revelations. Apparently, Doi is the new backbone of Atlas. He also co signed a theory that Persona 3 was a test to see if the games could be made successfully without k a z m a k a n i k o s art or input, and this was made without his knowledge, and that there were some nefarious reasons as to why k a z m a k a n i k o didn't hold the copyright to his artworks anymore. So let's break these things down. First, the gallery. Yeah, that's unusual, but from what I can tell, none of the art is really labeled by the artist. Most had the date it was made or used, and what a huge chunk of the c o s m o c o n i c o art was, was promo posters for the games. So that sort of labeling is kind of inherently obvious because it has the dates on the poster. From the photos I found on Twitter, only one promo piece had this description, and it was for Nocturne. The text on the bottom explains the piece, it seems. It's frankly too blurry for me to read, so maybe this incident wasn't as malicious as reported. Next, staff not willingly disclosing 
private information about what happened to Cosmiconica. This was around the time that Atlas only had around 270 staff in the Japanese side of things. There's a lot of potential reasons why they didn't tell the attendees. One, maybe they didn't know. Two, they probably have some sort of NDA or some sort of thing where they don't want to be unprofessional and disclose private information. Considering it without a malicious angle, it just sounds like people who don't want to get fired for breaching terms, or they don't know and they don't want to try to explain something they don't know. I mean, frankly, that last argument's a little weak, but I'm still going to propose that. As for Doi being the new backbone, well, considering in Shin Megami Tensei 4, Doi made it pretty clear that he had to get approval for every design move he made, and that Eiji Ishida and Yamai seemed to be the ones taking most of the interviews, I think that this one is not really that true. The Persona 3 theory is hard to discuss. Atlas was smaller at the time, under 200 staff in Japan. The idea that they had the development of Persona 3 a secret from Kaneko is really funny to consider, and we have a response from Kaneko where he does say, and I quote, how did Soijima come to take over the art for Persona series? I wanted to let the newer, younger staff grow and gain experience. I tried not to, you know, push my own view or anything on Persona. That's because there's a sort of fan that likes the dark, colder atmosphere of the core Megaten series, and Persona's a lot lighter. And I want Persona to be for a wider audience to appreciate Megaten. It's like a separate branch I'd like to make more distinguished by having someone other than myself working on it. So in summation, he was aware of Persona 3 and wanted to build it into something bigger and more marketable, sensing that it's somewhat wise to give young staff a chance to grow. Lastly is Kaneko's copyright. For the reprints of the Kaneko Works art books volumes 1 through 3, his copyright is no longer there. It's also not in any of the further prints, volumes 4 through 9. If you had an original of 1 through 3, you'd know the conceit from the beginning was to create a 10 volume series originally with a cover that interacted with each other, making one large Kaneko art piece. Obviously, that didn't happen. Also excluded from volumes 4 through 9 are interviews from Kaneko himself, which were present in the original 3. I honestly can't offer a kind of rationalization for this. From what I've read about Kaneko up to today, he doesn't have a fondness for drawing necessarily, it was a job that he just wanted to do very well, to the point where he wanted to inspire others. He's mentioned not sketching or drawing in his free time, and all that to say, I don't think he has a whole lot of reverence or fondness for his work beyond being pleased if it's done well. This is a lot of speculation based on things he said, however. Now, as for why the copyright isn't there, there's not a clear answer. I checked to see maybe he lost the copyright due to time or but that actually wouldn't have happened because the copyright should have lasted for quite some time. This leaves him with a couple of reasons why he doesn't have the rights. He either sold them, he forfeit them, or he lost them. It's worth noting the change was effective around the time Atlas was acquired by Sega, following Atlas's former ownership being investigated for criminal activity and dissolving their assets. So we have all these factors at play. Either he sold the rights to his works out of necessity or otherwise, forfeited the rights due to a weird play where everyone was seemingly fired and rehired during the transition as part of Japan's civil rehabilitation law. I can't claim to be completely aware of the bankruptcy laws in Japan, and this is definitely not the video for me to attempt to research and competently explain it. But lastly, the other option is that he lost the rights due to some nefarious scheme. Now. My personal opinion is that he likely sold it or lost it due to the bankruptcy procedure stuff. But that still leaves the question, why is he gone? Well, my point of reference, what I made this whole video for is the Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Reminisce book, which includes a lengthy Cosmo Conigo interview. The last page of the interview is where the meat regarding his thoughts on Atlas and his future is. Here's what that interview says. You're talking about what you want to put in the sequel, but what are you really thinking about? Have you already started working on it secretly? Well, I may or may not have concrete plans, but I do intend to work on... I'm planning to work on projects including Shimagami Tensei 4. 
I'd like to play a new Mega Ten game that you yourself have planned. I think that would be difficult. If you come up with a plan like Ishida did this time, you'll probably have to incorporate your own ideas and images into it to produce it. I've had a lot of experience on the front line of development in the past, and I've had a lot of fun. There were far fewer of us then than there are now, but there were times when my colleagues and I would argue about this and that while fine-tuning the timing of the dialogue display. And there were times when we got into trouble just before the last train and had to hurry up because the train would have gone if we didn't finish soon. We had to hurry up. It was tough, but it was really fun. But now I have to hand over that experience to someone else. From now on, different people will have to have such experiences. So, Kaneko-san, will you be like Louis Cipher, who guides them? I want to look like that and be cool like that. Sometimes even dressed as a woman. This is my translation, obviously. And I'm an amateur, but that's a pretty shocking revelation. And at the same time, it's really not. Kaneko is saying that he's kind of done with the grind of game development in the way that he had been experiencing it and wants more to guide production instead. This is very much in line with his talk about Persona 3 and wanting new blood to have a chance. At the end of the day, Cosmo Kaneko seems to have moved on in terms of contributing creatively. Whether this is definitive based on the Reminisce interview or not is really not inherently obvious, but to me, that's exactly what I think he's saying there. I think this explains why we hadn't seen new art from him outside of the Oda Nobunaga he drew with Megumi Shiraishi a few years ago, and why he mostly supervised how the revisions to his drafts would be handled as well as the world design in Shin Megami Tensei 4, rather than drawing anything himself. It's sad to see an end of an era, but Cosmo Kaneko is a storied man who cared about inspiring people and guiding new creative minds. He said he wanted to evolve the franchise in new ways, and he did so. Whether it meant someone else expanding on his story ideas for Digital Devil Saga, someone else coloring his art, or creating games based on the limitations provided to him to create experiences that were, frankly, unforgettable. Don't be sad if we don't get more art from Cosmoconico. Instead, I want to leave you all with another Cosmoconico quote. I hope that in the future, I will be able to influence others in turn. It would make me so happy. Then, years later, I would be so happy if a producer said, Megatent inspired me to create this work. Thank you for watching and goodbye, fellow Megatenists.